Hello, this is Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind podcast for Friday, July 1st, 2016. As of this recording, Sierra is still missing. So, what I thought I'd talk about today, I'm coming to you from the couch on the man cave again, kind of chillaxing. Actually, I'm, it's work hours, but I'm sh- recording the podcast. Don't tell anybody. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd talk about our experience last night. So, I, I may have mentioned this briefly, but there was a time about a week, almost two weeks now ago, where uh, uh, I was like, getting ready in the morning and it was on it was on a Sunday and the wife suddenly shouts out to me what's the name of that song and it was um every breath you take by the police and so I thought a second and just told her what the title was and and then she's telling somebody else and she's telling the radio and she was the first person to call to get tickets to uh, the rock paper scissors tour which is a tour of Sting and Peter Gabriel together. Now I've seen, or we've seen, Sting uh, several times in concert. We've seen him at least three times. We were trying to remember how many, and it's been at least three uh, times in concert solo. And they were always really, really good concerts. And we've seen him on the Police Reunion Tour. Uh, so, you know, we always know that Sting's worth it, worth the money, you know. And in this case, we didn't pay anything. But these were like uh, $80 tickets. We were... So, and, and then Peter Gabriel, I listened to her for a long time. Love his music. Uh, do not have... I've never seen him in live before. So I, I didn't have any sense of what he would be like live or not. And and so the day finally came, and that was yesterday. You know, So we had to pay for parking. And we had to pay for... Um, you know, if we wanted any goodies there i mean the wife bought some m&ms and i bought a the pop at one point because i was thirsty we got there right when the doors open at 6 30 and we got a great parking spot uh, although we were kind of around the around the we still had a bit of walking to do within the thing because the door we went in by the car we had to walk like half the circumference of the thing um so we got there and and we just found our seats and we were pretty high up we were uh, on the side you know so it's a typical the palace of auburn hills is where it was at which is where the detroit pistons play and it's you know your typical stadium it's in an oval shape and they had the stage on one side of the oval and and they um we were on the left side I guess if you're on the stage, you'd be stage right. But from where we were looking at it, it was the left side of the stage. And we were in the second pole. And we were really only about four rows down from the top. I didn't think they were going to be quite nosebleed. But really, once we got there, yeah, they were pretty much nosebleed. Um, you could see the stage pretty nicely. You know, the people were like that big. Fortunately, they had some screens set up. And they were recording it. Or... or they were they were doing it so they did some great great things on this show it was really enjoyable uh and they hit a lot of their they hit a lot you know most of their big hits it was basically a a, a greatest hit show and you know peter gabriel looks nothing like what i've remembered him as you know from back in the days of sledgehammer and, and what have you because he's totally bald now or mostly i think he's got like kind of the picard hair around the back here but it's it's totally white so he looks like me basically and um but older yeah much older because they're in their 60s sting had had his kind of normal spiky haircut that like what he had when he was in dune but it was yeah he was showing a little bit more forehead than he was uh was then but they both sounded really good you know, Peter Gabriel is, has the ability to do these long, soaring notes. And he was able, he can still do that. I mean, he, he's, he sounded really good. There were a couple of times where Sting didn't do some high notes. But then there were other times where he did. So I think he was just kind of picking and choosing where to do that. There were some of the songs where, uh, of, of, for Peter Gabriel, like um, Shock the Monkey. Um 
where somebody, and I don't think it was Peter, was doing the, there was like this, I, I can't do it. I can't get that high, but there was like this really high on the monkey. There was like this really high thing he would do to kind of scoop the note, note up. And and so I think one of his backup singers was doing it. it. The band was massive because they basically had, um, they had both their bands there. And so Sting's people all had blue on or had a blue instrument in, in the case of guitar. And Peter Gabriel's had red. And so at the beginning there, they would like the stage would turn red and, and then you knew a Peter Gabriel song was coming. If it turned blue, you knew a, a, a Sting song was coming. They did do some stuff together. And then toward the end, the kind of red and blue thing, they didn't, they didn't do that quite so much. They did do some swapping that was interesting. Like uh, Sting did Shock the Monkey. Now, if you'd asked me going into this, if I wanted Sting to do Shock the Monkey... I don't know that I would have been enthused about that because Shock the Monkey is is an awesome song and, and it would have been cool to hear um, Peter Gabriel sing it. But Sting did an awesome job and Peter was backing him up a little bit. So you did get, a little, get to hear a little bit of, of Peter singing it. But Sting did a great job with that and it was really cool. Um, I, I liked that a lot more than I, than I... When I realized that Sting was doing Shock the Monkey, I was like, what? What? And um, I've got the, the playlist here on, on the tablet. And looking at some of the other stuff that they did. Um, they did a, they actually did one song, Dancing with the Moonlit Night, which I guess is a Genesis cover. And, and I like Genesis, but I'm more of a Peter, um, uh, a Phil Collins era Genesis guy. I've never really heard the Genesis that, that Peter Gabriel was in. Um, and so I guess I have not. I've heard at least one song. It was pretty good. The message in a Bottle was really cool. I mean, on these really, really old ones, the whole stadium singing along. It was awesome. Um, and also for a lot of the, a lot of the, um, old, 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 um, Peter Gabriel, like San Jacinto, which was in the, uh, on the security album, which is the same one that Shock the Monkey was on. Everybody was singing that message in a bottle. You know, they were doing it where he was having us sing back and forth, and that was awesome. It's always cool when you got a whole stadium full of people singing. That's that's neat. They did uh, sing song an Englishman in New York together, and that was really cool since they're both English. Um, and uh, you know, so that was really neat. It was kind of interesting because Sting was 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 suddenly seemed to be pronouncing Englishman as like Englishman. So I don't know if he was like really trying to up the reggae. He, when he recorded that song for his album, that's not how he pronounced it. So I'm not quite sure uh, what, what there was about that. Um, uh, Peter Gabriel covered a song of Sting's. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, it might have been The Hounds of Winter. Because I don't really remember hearing that was Sting doing it. I be, but the one that um, that Peter Gabriel did, I mean, he totally rearranged it. It was, like, totally different. It took me a while to realize that, oh, that was a Sting song. I started recognizing the words, but I was, like, he was, like, lines into it, two or three lines into it before I realized it. Um, Sting did Kiss That Frog, which was cool, a Peter Gabriel song. And, and they hit all the really, the really big ones. We got to hear a lot of cool um, police stuff. They did Invisible Sun, which is one of my all-time favorite police songs. And and the, the majority of police stuff, they played like the police would do it, um, which was cool. Like, I've heard Sting do Roxanne several times, but, but when he did it on his solo tours, he would always do it. Uh, it was like a time where he gave the band a break, so he'd just be up there kind of a, an acoustic version of it and that's good but it was still cool to hear all the guitar riffs that you know um so you had that you had driven to tears uh as far as old police you had um about methods of bottle i mentioned walking your footsteps which was fun that was one where there's this there's this verse that's really high up and he kind of he shied away from that it was fine but yeah, I did notice it because I was curious. I thought, mm, I wonder if he's going to do that. Every little thing she does is magic. If you love somebody, said, oh no, that's a sting. Roxanne, I mentioned they did that. And then for the encore, uh, they did do an encore, a two-song encore. One of the encore was Every Breath You Take. 
so we so we did get to hear that. So that was cool. Some of the some of the things that uh, they did from Peter Gabriel, they started off with the rhythm of the heat, which was excellent. He did a really good job on that. Um, and then Games Without Frontiers. It was either Games Without Fr Frontiers or No Self Control that I think Sting did. I think it kind of. I mean, this this concert was almost three hours. It was it was a long concert. So trying to remember which ones Sting did and which ones Peter did was a little was a little tough. Um, they did Red Rain, uh, San Jacinto. I mentioned uh, Don't Give Up, and and that was that was really cool. Uh, Salisbury Hill. Um, Love Can Heal. Love Can Heal was a newer song. I don't know about where that is. He actually, uh, he actually wrote that or, or sang that in honor of that uh, British MP that got killed shortly before the Brexit vote, and uh, he actually met her a long, long time ago um, at a. Uh, it's kind of like a retreat for people that were interested in changing the world, and she was talking about how she was going to get into politics. So that was kind of interesting. Um, and then in your eyes, and then for the very last song, the on, the second encore song, they did Sledgehammer, which was just totally awesome. Uh, so it was it was it was a lot of fun. There is there is I remember when I was reading up about Genesis and especially Peter Gabriel's days, and one of the things that kind of led to him leaving was, you know, he was really into the performance of it, kind of like. David Bowie used to, you know, he'd be wearing makeup and, and all this stuff. And, and I think that was one of the things that kind of led to him leaving Genesis because he wanted to do this. And the other guys were kind of like, you know, dude, we just want to play some music. And, you know, he did not do that. I mean, he wasn't dressed up or anything, but, but there is this theatricality to what he does. Like there was this one bit where I forget what the song was that they were doing, but it had a good beat to it. And he was singing and he was walking around a little bit. And there was a line that he got into the middle of, of 10 people. So you had like a couple guitar guys and you had um, the cello player. No, it wasn't cello player, but it was like the violinist, I think. Maybe another bass guy. And then you had three backup singers, one of which for that song was Sting. And as soon as he took his place, and he took his place in the middle of this line, and as soon as he got there, they started doing this little sidestep choreography, and they're all doing it together. And it wasn't much. It was just kind of a little side-to-side -side stepping thing, but it just looked awesome because it was like, it was as soon as he took his place, and then they were doing it, it was like he locked, he, he got locked into the machine and then they started doing it and it was really cool and there were a number of things he did that were you know, where he was doing with arm movements or whatever that were just you, I just got a real sense of theatrics from him and you know kind of fits in I think with his earlier stuff you know Sting will stand there and he'll sing a song and he'll sing the snot out of it and it's awesome but he's he's not really so much into the theatrics part of it really but you know when he was doing the backup stuff he was doing all the movements i mean he was doing really good so it was an awesome show uh, if it's coming to your town and you like sting you like peter gabriel worth the money i mean we had tickets and we didn't um we didn't pay for them i would have paid for that it was a good time and, and it was a long show i mean it was like two hours and 45 minutes so certainly worth your money. And there was no opener. It was just them. They got going pretty much on time. I think they were like five minutes, maybe ten minutes late. And then it was just nonstop the whole time, other than, you know, between when they got off and when they come back on for the for the encore. But beyond that, there was just like it was just nonstop music. And it was an awesome, awesome show. So if it's coming to your area, I would recommend go check it out. It's called the Rock Paper Scissors Tour. They didn't really speak to that too much. There were some of the graphics behind them that, that, that had that. The graphics were pretty neat that they had there. Especially at the end, they had they had like these panels that were dropped on the back. And they were like portrait-style panels. And at the end, they had pictures of all the band members. And they were like, I don't know, you're buying a, you're buying a robot or something. Because the picture was there and it would just rotate around. You know, you're just seeing it. And, you know, 
Peter Gabriel was there and Sting was there and you know they were all there and just kind of like rotating around together as you know here pick out the guy you want and you can take him home <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, rock paper scissors check it out if it's in your area. I guess that'll be that for today. I'm already at 15 minutes. I should stop talking. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. God willing, the sun don't or the crick don't rise. Sun should rise, please. Um, and I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you.